Hey guys, Middle Jesus here. Now recently I was asked to be part of the Xbox Summer Fest Game Showcase, and in there they gave me about a minute to talk about my history of collecting the Xbox. And as you can imagine, that's incredibly difficult to do, so I really just focused on three of the consoles that I've had over the last couple of years, but I thought it might be kind of fun to do a video like this, which is really a companion piece to that, because as you can see, I actually have 11 different Xboxes covering the entire generation. And so some of these consoles are stock, some of them are modded, a couple of them are special editions, and one of them is Japanese. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you what I think of the upcoming Xbox Series X. Let's take a look. I actually got lucky getting my first Xbox because I literally walked into a GameStop and found this beautiful Halo Special Edition Xbox in translucent green just sitting on the shelf, brand new. So that was my very first Xbox. It also came with the translucent green S controller, which is one of my all time favorite controllers. It was around this time I was introduced to the idea of modding your Xbox and I went to a guy who actually did it locally here. You can see the launch screen that he modified, although I'm blurring out his website and his phone number because I'm not sure he would actually want that shared to the world, but he did a great job. And so this was my first experience dealing with a console that is modified and allowed you to copy games to the hard drive so that basically you didn't have to wear out your discs, plus they loaded faster. There's also a bunch of emulators on here that run really well on the original Xbox. However, at the time, the only hard drive I could afford to put in here was a 20 gig drive. And considering that a lot of Xbox games are anywhere from one gig to five gigs, it fills up pretty quickly. And so recently I added another modded original Xbox to my collection, primarily because I wanted to have a much larger hard drive in there so I could put way more of my games on the actual system. And so for this one, there's nothing really fancy going on, at least on the outside. But on the inside, you've got that awesome two terabyte drive. Plus you've got the new versions of the operating system. So uh, I was immediately able to tell the difference when I fired this up compared to my original that I, which I had done, you know, more than a decade ago. And then of course, I wanna mention the awesome Xbox launch team 2001 with the Bill Gates signature on it. Plus it also has the translucent green Duke controller. Um, this is definitely one of the highlights of my collection. Again, huge shout out to my buddy Andy who uh, hooked me up with this. You are awesome, dude. And I know people were kind of curious as to what it's running. So here is the interface running. And you'll notice that actually it's got a bunch of save games on there from the previous owner. Uh, but then also check this out. I thought this was pretty funny. If you go into the music section, ripped on the hard drive, is a Motorhead album. Now, I, I know that's the previous owner, but I, I like to pretend that maybe Bill Gates was or is a huge Motorhead fan, but you know, that's, that's just silly. And by the way, many of you have mentioned in the comments that since this is an early Xbox, it has a clock capacitor that can leak all over the motherboard and ruin it. So I'm in a bit of a pickle here because, well, I don't really want to open it up because it is very collectible, but if I don't, it could ruin it. So I'm going to end up taking it to my buddy Cody, who works at Pink Gorilla, who can help me fix it. Moving on to the Xbox 360, you see my original one here, and this was such a workhorse, and I played so many awesome games on it. Now, what's crazy about this is that it's got that E3 2005 faceplate on there, which is somewhat collectible these days because uh, it's my understanding that they were only given out to the press at E3. And so that's why it's uh, pretty cool to have. I also like this one because it has that removable 250 gigabyte hard drive that attaches to the outside. That's such a weird feature if you think about it today. And what's even weirder is that it didn't come with Wi-Fi. So you actually had this optional Wi-Fi adapter that you would attach to the back of it here with an antenna that would pop up. Again, such a crazy time. And I gotta give a huge shout out to the original Xbox 360 wired controller. I love this thing and use it all the time on my PC. 
Moving on, you see the Xbox 360E. I think that's what this model is here, I forget, but um, this was a last minute purchase at a GameStop, like a Black Friday sale that they were having, you know, many years ago where I think they were selling these for like $99. And so I walked, <laughs> I walked in there on a Black Friday and was like, yeah, I'll take one. And it's actually a really well-made version of the Xbox 360. And so I've played a ton of games on this. I also have this really cool Gears of War vault or armor that was released for the Xbox 360 and you see it here. This is made by a company called Caliber 11. And I've done a video on this in the past, but basically what it does is it uses the USB port on the Xbox 360 to power its LEDs. And then it's got a couple different toggle options there. Uh, I just think it looks really cool. Again, I've done a video on this in the past if you wanna see some of the other ones that they made. Um, definitely cool accessories. And then this is a hacked Xbox 360 that I got from Reggie when I got back from Japan because I wanted to be able to play those Japanese games and they were region locked. And so he actually gave me this, um, although it was, kind of not working great at the time. And so I ended up taking it to a friend of mine named Tony who could fix it. It was having a problem with its fan. And you'll notice here that there is a blue LED in there when it's turned on. So uh, just kind of a weird, quirky, kind of beat up, you know, hacked Xbox. But um, it's really nice to have a modded one because again, you can copy games to the hard drive. You can play all regions. You can do homebrew games, stuff like that. And then I eventually did get a Japanese Xbox 360. You see it here, it's nothing really special, but the reason why I did get it is because I was running into problems, compatibility issues with that modded Xbox. And I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna buy a Japanese one. Uh, and I'm really glad I did because now I have many options to play all those amazing shooters if I want to. And then I have the awesome Star Wars edition of the Xbox 360 one of the crowning jewels of my collection. It was sent to me by a viewer, his name's Joey. Again, thank you so much, Joey. But uh, he knows I'm a huge Star Wars fan and Xbox fan. I love this one because when you push the buttons, it, it has Star Wars sounds. Plus, it's got that amazing C-3PO controller. It's a... It's a magnet for fingerprints, but I don't care because it's so cool. Now, I'll admit that I was a late adopter to the Xbox One. It wasn't until Microsoft released the Xbox One X that I was like, okay, now's the time for me to go ahead and jump in and get one. But I wanted it to be cool looking, so I actually bought one of these skins to make it look like the original Xbox. Uh, you see me applying it here, and that definitely made it a little bit cooler looking. And you're seeing some older footage here, and that's because my buddy Drunken Master Paul has been using it for probably about a year now. And that's because I picked up the Gears 5 edition of the Xbox One X. You see it here. And again, this is one of probably the best looking special edition consoles ever. I just think it looks so cool. And really, I think that the Xbox One X is a great console. It took me a while to come around to it, but honestly, with the backwards compatibility and also just the performance of first and third party games, I have no complaints. It's a great system. So what are my thoughts on the upcoming Xbox Series X? Well, I believe that Microsoft tends to do some of their best work when they're a little bit behind the competition or maybe in second place. I mean, for an example, look at the original Xbox and how it struggled against the PlayStation 2 well, that really motivated Microsoft to really kick butt with the Xbox 360. Of course, you had the red ring of death notwithstanding, but honestly, the hardware itself turned out to be a great console with a ton of great games with it. Now, when it comes to the Xbox One, I think they were a little bit overconfident and they got their butt kicked a little bit, which means that Microsoft is really going to pour a ton of performance into that Xbox Series X. Seems like it's gonna be a really awesome machine, plus all of that backwards compatibility, and then take into account that they've been acquiring some amazing first party developers over the last couple of years. Uh, and then on top of that, I mean, I don't know about you, but they finally announced a new Fable, and that to me is a system seller. So I'm very excited for that because I loved Fable 1 and 2. So yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic about the Xbox Series X. I'm not crazy about its name. I think it's kind of confusing, but the hardware does look legit and there are at least a couple games on it that I think I would play day one. By the way, 
if Microsoft happens to be watching this video, I'm not saying that they do, but if they did, another thing you might also consider, kind of a little bit of a tangent here, but guys, it's time for an Xbox mini classic. Everybody else has done it, and I think that would be a very cool thing to do uh, somewhere down the road. I know I would probably buy one. So, all right guys, love to know what you think down in the comments below. Do you have any special edition or cool Xboxes that I need to know about? Please post a comment down below. All right guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.